Um, so here you go. Let's do a quick intro, Becca. Yeah. So uh, I'm a gameplay programmer on the Alienation team. And I've been playing games since forever. You know, yeah, forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was just, you know, thinking this is clear kind of a throwback to the 8-bit era. Yeah. Mega Man type of games. Uh, even from the graphics to the gameplay and everything, uh, how do you feel? Is it is it just that, or is it more than that? Um, well, I think it's like well, this is definitely like the the first thing you see, and the first like the really important thing here, I think, is like it is a you know it is a throwback, and it's like a, and and they I I think they go to very like. They go to like great lengths. Great actually. lengths, yeah, exactly. In uh, making this, uh, staying like, true to the yeah, exactly. Original. I mean, the color palette is like that's. I think it's almost exactly what NES was actually capable of. But it's like they do. I think they allow themselves a little bit more. Just like, a tiny bit. Yeah, I think more, there's right? like a couple of shades they use extra. <laughs> I think I'm not but, sure. And and I know that like the like sprite color limits and whatnot. I think they mostly stick to them, but but it's. Uh... So you could say that this is one of those titles that has uh, stayed as close to the original premise and original um, sort of uh, setup that was required. Because sometimes we talk about games that you know could this, uh, for example, you know Towerfall or Meat Boy, could it have been made on the yeah. the original? Um, you know, for example, NES, and uh, we, we sometimes we come to the conclusion that maybe yes, uh, some of the colors and effects they use are modern, and maybe the gameplay couldn't have mm. been as fluid. But with uh, Shovel Knight, you know, you feel that maybe this could have been. Yeah, I mean, this is very close to what you would have been able to do in on an NES, and uh, I mean, what they've said actually, like the developers, that it's like they kind of imagined this as. Like, if NES games would have been made for like another five years, maybe they could have like improved the, like they could have had a special chip on the cart and whatnot. Right. And they could have probably done, done this. Cool. They could have achieved this. And actually, the soundtrack, which is great, it's by Jake Kaufman, who's a awesome composer. He also worked on like uh, Mighty Switch Force and. Uh, my uh, DuckTales remix. Yeah, exactly. That that one did a great job on that. I heard the Moon Mission uh, kind of uh, the song a few like a year before it came out, and I, you know that's uh, one of the songs that really got yeah, that's the one, original. That's a classic song. So also a Capcom game actually. Yeah. Um, so so music, uh, art, uh, everything here is uh, fine tuned, mm. uh, especially for that uh, um, sort of an era. Yeah, it's it's like very close. Actually, the uh, so what I was about to say about the soundtrack is that it's actually like uh, actually using like one of the I think one of the Konami chips that was around. It's like it's not like the base like NES sound chip that they're using here. It's like a Konami version. Of yeah, I think it's like one of the more advanced chips, but it's like it's something you could have actually used on an NES game though. Awesome. So it could be possible almost like with slight modding. This could be put into a cartridge, printed out, and then uh, being you know be sold in a in a gray cartridge kind of a yeah. I think it, it's very well possible that they could do it if if it was. What kind of do you have any fond memories from that era? Like what kind of games did you like? Yeah, play? I mean, I mean, obviously, like this is very much like Mega Man, and that's like just one of my favorite games. I mean, this this Shovel Knight does like. Uh, do throwbacks to other games too, like Mario 3 and uh, Zelda 2. A little bit of DuckTales, I guess, but it's like, I guess they have actually just quoted that. Because you have this move here that you can do this uh, downward sort of uh, sort of pogo move. That's from the DuckTales, right? Yeah, but actually they've said that like people sort of attribute it to DuckTales, because that's where it was like really... They did like they did a lot with that move. That that was like a core move you had. That was the very like that that that's like the most important move in the game, and that's like defines that game. But in actually, they've said that the sort of pogo move here is actually more 
they actually modeled it after Zelda 2. In Zelda 2, you had, uh, instead of uh, the whole game being top-down, you had also the side-scrolling stuff, uh, which was very fairly unique in the long run of the Zelda yeah. games. Uh, did it have like a downward sword thing? Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, that, that's exactly the move. Although I'm, I don't think they ever used it like quite as much as like DuckTales or uh, right, Shovel Knight right, right. does now. Maybe they used it in, in uh, Smash Brothers later on. With, with yeah, the, yeah, they actually yeah, Link's, they have that like special move there. Yeah, though I think like that's also a reference to like uh, what's it the <laughs> <laughs> yeah DuckTales. Uh, no, but the. Um, Oh, so the Wind Waker. And in Wind oh, Waker, I think you have like that yeah. move, or there's a scene where you do like a... Okay, tell us about uh, Shovel Knight. Uh, just outside of, you know, the way uh, the game was made and, you know, it being mm -hmm. kind of a throwback. Uh, what do you like about the game? What's... Well, it's like the controls are great. I mean, it's very simple in like the control, control wise, because it's like mostly, most everything is like, on like just two buttons and so you have like jump basic... and hit. Yeah, exactly. It's like I have the jump, I have the attack, shot, and that's like pretty much it. And that's exactly like going with the sort of NES model of with things. Two buttons. Yeah, but I mean that's wonderful because it's like it just makes it so tight. There's not a lot of uh... I don't have to worry about a lot of like different things. It's just like this. Pure, pure experience of just like action, and I'm just like in there. And it, the platforming stuff comes out. I mean, because you clearly have this uh, sort of a pogo stick mechanic mm. there. Um, so that's one thing you clearly do quite a bit. Yeah. And then the other part is just uh, using the shovel as a melee attack. Yeah. Uh, is there any kind of upgrades that you go through? Like... Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, and you also uh, you get like upgrades to your shovel and your armor but also later you'll uh, actually what what we'll see first is like you have these uh, evil knights yes yeah, that's black knight nice. that's uh shovel knight's rival nemesis yeah exactly you kind of get the feeling that they're sort of friends but they're sort of not they're not on good terms right now yeah exactly they've had some um, <laughs> bad evenings in the bar or something yeah exactly so Okay, if you if you beat this guy, do you like get the dark shovel then as an upgrade or? No, you actually doesn't work don't. Like it, it doesn't quite work like that. We'll see in just the minute, next yeah. level. And I mean, whoa. Do you see? Is it to you something that the does the level, um, the gameplay skill required? Is it something that's a, a, a good curve or does it? I think Stay it has quite like... a good curve. I mean, I don't think it, this is actually not like the hardest of core. It's not like super hard. It's not like Super Meat Boy, which gets really hard. I mean, I think this is more of a sort of an enjoyable experience, and it's much more leaning on the yeah. sort of retro Values. sort of appeal. But the, I think they do a really good job of that, and it's like. But you know, some people say it's it's much harder to make. A easy game than a hard game because mm. you have to sort of find that balance of what's still enjoyable and and so yeah, on. Yeah, I think that's true. You know, making something that's hardcore is just maybe maybe killing you too much then. But out of modern games, is some some games that come to mind that you could compare it to? Well, I mean, I could, well, I mean, obviously like you have modern a lot of platformers, like, I, I might compare it to something like Outland, you know, I mean, in some sense. But it's like, I think this is a... And sometimes it's just a game that doesn't really exist now. It's in a genre of its own. This is clearly from, from Zelda 2, and the previous yeah, scene exactly. was from Mario 3. Yeah, uh, I mean, here he kind of says that you may not enter with weapons. I think that's a reference to Bionic Commando on the NES. Okay. Where you had the... Um, they actually had those levels... Where, where it was this neutral zone. Right, right, right. You, If you actually... They did allow you to shoot your gun. If you did, they would kind of descend on you. And It was kind of like the town here. This guy looks a bit like from Chrono Trigger. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, He's actually a comedian. Okay. Well, that's good. Stand-up guy. Don't throw in the trowel. So, clearly, it's about... It's a game about games. And, uh, you know... Mm. It's... Uh, it's Speaking to an audience uh, about nostalgia, 
about uh, some things we miss and um, and maybe yeah. maybe there's a lot of value to gain just from that. But well, then for sure, but I think it's still like I think it stands on its own as well. But it's like. I mean, it, I, I think it's kind of hard for me to disconnect those two things because I, I kind of love those games that this is uh, this is kind of based on. <laughs> nice. Steal this guy's boot. And there's a lot of small things like uh, I noticed that you woke up at the at the fire and you kind of dug up the fire and got some more diamonds from there. Yeah. And uh, here you were jumping on the loop. <laughs> so there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of little things that are. Not really like super important, or like the yeah the guy telling jokes in the yeah in exactly the, in the ta tavern so clearly they put like, in you know a lot of effort, a lot of love. Yeah, I think so. It's like, and the levels feel like they have uh, their own personality and sort of their own color palette. Even yeah, and this has kind of this uh, actually kind of this gaudy, really uh, sort of everything is kind of made of gold. This is the king knight level. So that's his his palace with a lot yeah. of money to spend, I suppose. Uh, Becca, you know, when you make games here and mm. uh, you make games on your free time and you enjoy uh, games in general, <laughs> and now he's fishing with the... Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so, you know, from a game like this, what kind of stuff do you really uh, take from it? And uh, uh, as an influence, you know, does this make you think about, oh, we should do Easter eggs like this or... What kind of stuff could you take from Shovel Knight? Yeah, I mean, I think the, like, oh, I mean, this game is, like, yeah, full of kind of Easter eggs and references and whatnot, so it's, like, I mean, that's sort of a one thing. I mean, I don't think that fits into every game. No. But I think there's a sort of simplicity here, and it's just this, uh, you know, this really sort of core, simple experience, and you just, like, everything fits together so well. Something that we were very accustomed to when, you know, this era was the, the norm. Uh, for me, you know, I don't think it's been mentioned yet, but Ghouls and Goblins, and, and I think there was a Super Ghouls and Goblins mm. on the SNES. But that's, uh, that's a hardcore game that I always love playing, and uh, a lot of these hardcore games you never finished. Because, mm. well, you know, maybe some people were that good, but for me personally, uh, well, Battletoads, uh, Ghouls and Goblins, uh, or Ghosts and Goblins is called somewhere, I guess. Uh, I think there's uh, Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts. Okay. Well, you, you know you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So so these kind of games were really hardcore platformers. Mm. And you had a very basic kind of upgrade system. Uh, you know, you either had armor or you uh, didn't have armor and you got a special weapon and so on. And clearly you get into some bit more difficult platforming games. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. This is kind of a, well, not really a secret area, I wouldn't say, but kind of a little slightly yeah, off the beaten path. <laughs> Even just the animation of him digging through the yeah, chest. I found a guy called Chester nice. in his chest. This is actually yeah. the guy from the village. Yeah, I saw him. Yeah, so he kind, of, he kind of appears in all the levels, and like he's kind of hidden away, but if you find him, you can buy it. At, like a new sort of uh, item from them. In this case, is we this get the this, upgrade uh, stuff you talked about before? Or yeah, exactly. It... I mean, this is not really like. Well, I mean, it's uh, this is like the special items, basically. I mean, there's a little bit later on, like uh, say three levels in, actually four levels in, if you come to like the tutorial level. Yeah. Uh, you get like this. Uh, you actually get like some upgrades right in on. the next town, basically. There's the sort of. Uh, but there's different stuff. I mean, now you have a projectile that you're shooting from your shovel. Yeah. And, uh... And you shoot stuff. Was it hard? The first time you played it, was it hard? Because I just downloaded on my Wii U the, the Mega Man, uh, you know, 1 through 6, I think. And, mm. uh, to me, the first three at least had a lot of memories from childhood. And they're difficult. Like, they yeah, are... Yeah, those games are really difficult. They're hard I mean, I think it's... Oh, shit. No, no, well, no, we should see <laughs> yeah. actually. There's a little bit of a nod, actually, to Dark Souls, I think. Right, Because right. Uh, I sort of lost, like, about half my money mm. that I collected. and it's But it's still floating there in the level. I just need to get back there. Okay, so you go back and you can collect that money again. Yeah, exactly. 
So it's it's still there, but if I die, it's gonna go away. So in terms of difficulty, would you rate this more of a Mega Man X than a Mega Man 2? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not that tough, I think. Although, then again, it's kind of hard for me to say because I've played a bunch of these games. So it's, uh, I guess it's more of a... Is this... but, but I think it's like, it, it's definitely uh, more, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it, not it, it's, not, it's not like punishing the way like some of the older games were. Right, right. I think it's like, because you kind of, I mean, I get to start at a checkpoint and yeah. there's no, I, I don't have any, like, I don't have lives. I can just, like, keep trying. Exactly. exactly. There's, but uh, there is actually a kind of neat mechanic here. If I want to sort of make it a bit harder for myself, if I, uh, you know, if I feel like this is too easy or if I just want some extra money, I can actually destroy this checkpoint. <laughs> oh, there you <laughs> And go. I get some money from that. So, so can, that's like, I, I really hope I don't not die now because that would be embarrassing. <laughs> well, now you got a reason to try a bit more. Cool. So this is, uh, of course, the boss of this level. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I, I thought I thought you had that thing going there. Yeah. No. I, to be honest, I haven't played this game, and that's why I'm just interested uh, to see, you know, new yeah, nuances there. Little, little this is this a secret. special place? There's a little secret there, yeah. And, you know, I was kind of wondering, you know, about the difficulty because there's some games that I just, I'm too afraid to try mm -hmm. because you start thinking, oh, that's going to be too hard for me and so on. Yeah. But clearly this is a bit more accessible. I think this is. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's a nice difficulty, at least for me. I mean, I think the, I mean, it's clearly, I wouldn't say it's as hard as the Mega Man games, but it's like, I, I mean, it's not... It's not like it's easy all the way through, right? Right. right either, but it's like some variety. I guess it's like if you play all the Mega Man games, this shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> yeah, if you play through those. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the the story? And uh, let's not spoil the game, but mm. uh, does it? So does it work on? Right now, we have music covered, we have graphics covered, we have gameplay covered. Like if we were to do a full review. Uh, you know, let's just say. Yeah, we have to have all the components. Really. Yeah, well, you yeah, know, might so, as well discuss all the yeah. components while we're at it. <laughs> yeah. So, the story for what it is, because you know, a lot of these kind of games from from at least what we're going for here from the older era, uh, they had a very simple story. Yeah. But still, sometimes they had a quite a bit of impact. Um, I remember personally, for me, a game called uh, Little Nemo, where right, I was yeah. a kid, yeah, you know. That got lost in this weird dream world and and you can overtake these animal skins and whatever mm -hmm. and uh it, it was more about maybe i could relate to that little kid or something but it always yeah, had yeah. this emotional impact so are they going here for like just a humor factor because shovel knight is a very uh i unique... think there's like a little bit of actual emotion there into <laughs> it's uh well i mean i think it's it's still a pretty simple story but i think it's more about the uh you know, sort of, you feel like it's an actual world, I think. Yeah. It's not about, so much about the plot, but it's about, I think, the world and... Right, right. This kind of, again, sort of self-aware um, storytelling where you know that it's for the purpose of it being a game and so on. Yeah, I think so. It's like, but but, but it, the, the, I think there's some good moments in there. That at least, like, they feel good. Like... I'm getting something out of this more than just the gameplay. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's a, it's a balance too, right? Nice. Like you don't want too much of it, you don't want too little. But then again, that bit that you're gonna have there has to be just about right. Uh, nowadays, we focus a lot on story. Mm. Well, not Housemark personally, <laughs> but uh, you know, a lot of companies do. So, also understanding the nuances of very simple storytelling could be a skill in itself yeah exactly i mean i think there's i mean there these are definitely like distinct characters here and there's like a little bit of dialogue here between these guys and you can actually like this guy has sort of uh dethroned the actual king right he's king knight then chantras is the big bad sort of here and she's sort of given him power here right on so and it's, it's kind of evils more evils yeah exactly Exactly, and it's just like, I think it's more about characters in the world 
rather than like actual like plot. Right. I right. mean, the plot is pretty simple. Stereotypical uh, evil characters and then somewhat uh, <laughs> unique uh, main hero characters. Yeah, Shovel Knight is kind of. What do you mean? How did they come up with it? Is it in the story? Is it like a big part? Or we don't want to spoil it too much. Why no, is it the I'm... Shovel Knight? Or I'm not actually sure. I don't think they actually go. Go into it. it that much. I think it's. Uh, I imagine it's nice. kind of born out of the gameplay. Right. I mean, you have these uh, dig up these holes and stuff. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the dirt. Yeah. Because mm. I mean, you remember something like that. If you if you mention yeah. the game and shovel, then you probably think about this game because I don't think there's too many games mm. with shovel. This is a good music. Uh, That's very nice soundtrack there. Yeah, I love the soundtrack. It's great. Well, as, as I said, it's uh, Jake Kaufman. Actually, I think. Damn, am I getting confused? No, I'm pretty sure. Uh, actually, also the uh, composer for Mega Man 1, Anami Matsumai, she also did a couple of songs for this game. I remember which is interesting. hearing or reading something about that online. Yeah, there's a couple of songs by her. And that's a pretty, that's a pretty cool thing to have on, on a game like this. Clearly following in that tradition. Um, so you get to choose your levels a little bit. Is it just like side quests, or and you can actually go back into the map like that? Yeah, exactly. It's uh, well, this is actually not really a level, but there's a yeah. You can choose a like a little bit of Mega Man style. There's like basically this is the Specter Knight level, right. and what we did just now was the King Knight King Knight level, Pride More Keep, and there's a lock here. I basically need to defeat Specter Knight. Before so, I get right. to move up, move forward, so I have to do that. So. And basically, like, actually, once I beat both of these bosses, this uh, these clouds are gonna shift move, move over, yeah. and they're gonna. And all all the enemies, the main the bosses are called something nice. Yeah. Cool. And here's this little guy here who's sort of hanging around in front of the town. This is kind of like in Mario Three, you had the the uh, Hammer Brothers, right, who right. would appear like sort of block your way. Like here, if I wanted to go to the town, I'd have to fight them first. So, right, right, right. So, yeah. so I can do, and these are basically like these little levels. Encounters type things. Yeah, it's not, I mean, in Mario, it was more of an encounter, I think. In yeah. here, it's more just, it's just the, like a specific, special level that they made just for this. Cool. And it's kind of, you're on your way to the town, and then there's this, yeah, kinda, this yeah. time there's more enemies there. Right on. Yeah, so it's a decent and, thing. And you collect all this money all along, and then you, you can buy more stuff. Yeah. To upgrade. Yeah, I mean, like in, even in the level, actually, yeah, because like I met Chester, the the shopkeeper. The chest I mean, guy. Yeah, <laughs> the chest guy. I mean, he, he's actually back here in in town if we want to meet him. Right on. Also, um, this guy is actually the bard here. We can. Uh, there's like in the levels, there's these uh, music sheets, usually hidden, and huh. he'll actually pay for them. And, and then play the songs? Yeah, exactly. Like, this is basically a jukebox. So now we can just, like, hey, Bard, play me a song. Oh, yeah. And we tell him. Cool stuff. Um, we can play some songs here. So there's a lot of little details that goes into uh, having uh, just a fuller kind of uh, fuller experience with the music, uh, with the collectibles, and all these things. Yeah. And the comedian, of course, here. What was his name? Uh, Croker. Croker. And he's always going to tell you another joke? Yeah, yeah, he tells a lot of jokes. Uh, can I <laughs> give him an inch? He thinks he's a ruler. Little puns there to go yeah. along. All right. Um, thanks for, for showing Shovel Knight to us. And I'm sure we'll be able to play other cool games like that. Uh, mm. Very much something I think a lot of people at the office enjoy. So yeah. cool to have this insight, and you happen to know a lot about the game. So yeah. and even, oh. even the games they refer reference to, so that's very yeah, cool. Yeah, I hope this uh, has been entertaining. I, th I think so, very much. All right, thanks, Pekka. Uh, yeah. We'll we'll do some more another time. Yeah. Great to have you here. Awesome. All right, thanks.